All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the historical gamer again here. Um, probably a little bit confused by the command prompt on here. Looks like I'm in DOS. I'm actually using DOS Box. Um, it's a DOS simulator um, for the game that I'm going to be playing. Which is called Bravo Romeo Delta. There it is, Bravo, Bravo Romeo Delta. I'm um, going to start a new game here. What this game is, is it's a Cold War simulation. Um, so, it's a simulation of the Cold War gone hot. Um, and in the game, you take command of either the United States or the Soviet Union's nuclear arsenals. Now, thankfully, this is a scenario that never came to fruition. We obviously never had um, a nuclear war, but this game gives you the option to um, fight a limited nuclear war. Um, going to go over the controls. They're pretty basic. You'll see on the screen here, I, I don't have a mouse. Sorry, I mean, there is no, I do have a mouse, but there's no way to show you it. So it's just going to have to kind of walk you through on the, on the top left. You see it's day one of the war. I don't know when the war is, but it's day one of the war. The time is going to be in real time, but you have the ability to, to accelerate and slow down to real time. So you can accelerate and then decelerate back to real time. Um, you'll see it's 3, 59, 13 and counting. It's in military time, so that's 3 in the morning. Um, as far as underneath that, you'll see it says normal speed, hyper speed, um, N. If you hit the N key, it'll bring it down to normal. If you hit the H key, it'll accelerate it. If you hit the D key, it'll bring you to the option to uh, exit the game give you a summary of what's going on. I'm not going to do that right now. That's also how you would save the game. Now, on the top right, you'll see there's a command control communication. So we're going to go there first. Um, that's by hitting the C key in the top right corner, as you see there. So we're going to go to the C key. This gives you a summary of your um, different um, different weapons systems or communications assets or whatnot. So if you look here, the you type the I for the first one, ICBM control, and then it's not in here anymore. But if you hit the L key, that will change the alert status of that um, particular unit. So just for example. We're looking at the Tykovo ICBM field. There are SS-11 ICBMs. As you see there, it says SS-11. That's a type of Soviet missile. It's an ICBM field. Gives you the uh, latitude and longitude location of it, the status of it. It's operating, which is good. If it's hit by U.S. ICBMs or something along those lines, it will drop to potentially fallout, firestorm, you know, whatever the status of it. Firestorm obviously means it's just burning, it's on fire. Destroyed means it's destroyed. Um, operating is what you want, means you can use it. The readiness level is normal, so missiles, if you order, you know, SS-11s to be launched, it'll take a normal amount of time if you hit the L key which gives them a launch under attack request alert um, that will allow them to launch their missiles faster now it does take some time from a unit to go from its normal status to the launch under alert status um, so I'm gonna go through here and update all of these units just because I need to um, for the subs, this is probably the most important. Um, I hit U to go and look at my submarine ICBM. So this is a Yankee 1 class submarine, submersible or silent submersible ballistic nuclear. Um, number 1 is, they don't give them names, they're, they're numbers. Um, the home port is where it's based out of, so 
that's relevant in that you can target different locations. So the ICBMs, as I said, the location, the status. Um, the Americans can launch nuclear weapons trying to destroy these facilities. This is probably most important for submarines because it gives you a home port, and if the submarine is in its home port and an ICBM goes off there, obviously an ICBM has a nuclear weapon, so a nuclear weapon is going to wipe out anything in the port there, including the submarines. Right now, you see the status of this? submarine is operating so it's working but it's reactor down so what that means is the reactor is not turned on the ship is in port it's not ready for sea it'll take some time so I hit the L key and I'll request that it, it power up its its nuclear reactor get ready for sea but it'll still be docked in port um, and this one, for example, the next one, this Typhoon SSBN number 5, is, you'll see there the readiness, it is at sea, but it is not under alert. So I can change it to alert at sea. That's going to affect how quick it launches its missiles. Um, another one, reactor down, reactor down. This one's docked, so by upgrading its status, this one will set sail. Hopefully, before an ICBM gets to the Zephanala, I can't pronounce it, nuclear ballistic missile base, um, but who knows. Um, I don't know exactly how long it takes to change alert statuses, but it does take some time. Um, usually, I think at least a half hour, if not more. Um, obviously, if a nuclear submarine didn't have its reactor ready, it would take a heck of a lot longer than 30 minutes to get it ready for sea. But for the purpose of the game, that's pretty much roughly how long it's going to take. Maybe an hour, but even so, that's nowhere near fast or long enough. Um, and then I can hit the A key and go and look at my air bases. This is where my bombers are based out of. Um, these are all targets that the enemy can hit. Now this one is non-alert, so I'll put it on strip alert, which basically means if I order them to take off, they're, they're on the runway, they're ready to take off, but they're still sitting there. So non-alert is just in their hangars. Strip alert is on the actual runways. If they're already on strip alert, you can switch them to an airborne alert. Um, I don't, I just noticed that. I didn't realize you could send an airborne alert to a strip alert. So I thought maybe something that I don't want to do, um, but I don't know how to undo it. So that's good. Um, anyway. So yeah, if they're already in there, you don't want to send them to the strip because there are enemy missiles coming in. Um, I don't believe it really deals with vehicles being refueled and all of that so you can typically keep them on alert forever I think um, and then there is the O option which brings up your comms assets so this lists all the different communication fields that you have an LLC is a launch control center and it's at the Permovisk ICBM field um, ICBM fields have multiple launch centers um, communication effectiveness up top you'll see that on every single one of these tabs here is at 99%. That's really good because um, the lower your communications are, the harder it's going to get your orders through. So if you want to send an order through to launch a nuclear weapon, it might take you several tries to get it through um, if you don't have a high communications. Um, here we're going to go, we're going to hit S and we're going to go to the strike menu. So right now I've been authorized to use 30 nuclear warheads. Um, this simulates a limited nuclear war, um, so I have to do as much damage as I can with 30 weapons. Here's my target list. I can actually view a map. Um, I can view a map of the country. Um, I'm not sure what I need to do to view the map. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, hmm. Yeah, the, uh, there is a way to view the maps here, but I'm not sure it's, I haven't, I'm playing this game on my new computer, which I have not played on on this computer before with this game. I have played it on an older XP computer, which is... 
don't know why there's a skull and crossbones there. Um, the XP computer works this a little bit better. I don't have to do the DOS box um, emulator for this. I do. Um, I'm kind of just clicking all over. So actually, we're going to go to the tactical warning threat assessment, which is the T. Defense systems, 99%, so my defense systems are at top notch. Um, it gives you different warnings and alerts here. So when there's stuff to report about enemy submarines, submarines will attempt to hunt each other out and destroy each other. Uh, there's a simulated submarine war that goes on during this war. So any submarine reports will go to A, anti-submarines. It'll list all the historic ones that have happened. So far, there's nothing. Same for air defense. It'll list any incoming enemy aircraft that you pick up, if they're intercepted, if they're not intercepted, where their estimated targets are. Satellite defense will actually alert you when an enemy missile is launched. You'll pick up that launch signature, um, just like both sides had early warning systems, um, and still do, um, that would have picked up any kind of missile launch. That's where you'd see on satellite. Um, and then nuclear detection basically means that there's a, you know, where did a nuclear weapon go off? This will show some of your attacks as well as, you know, your allies or, or yourself getting hit. There's the radar option, which will actually give you a kind of an estimated where that enemy missile is going to go. So the satellite will pick up when the enemy missile launches. The radar will pick up when the missile is incoming and where it's going to hit. So you can try and plan accordingly. Although this is all incredibly limited as far as um, how much time you have to react. You really have no time to react in this game. I mean, if it says a missile's going to hit Moscow, you can't get your bombers off the ground soon enough. Once it says where it's going to hit, you might have five or six minutes. Those men are without luck. You're going to lose that unit if it blows up within a close enough proximity to its target. Um, now we're going to go back to the strike generator. So still have 30 weapons, politically authorized. Um, a for airbase. I can scroll through the enemy airbases and the enemy forces there. Um... So, you know, you can plan accordingly on what you want to attack. Uh, the United States doesn't have really any soft targets. Uh, Russia doesn't really either, but the United States also doesn't have any semi-hard targets. Um, I'm going to explain what a semi, a hard, and a soft is. A soft target is an enemy weapon system that has no protection. It's just basically sitting out in the open. A lot of the early ICBM fields were just, you know, basically like a missile sitting in a field with no protection. A semi-hard is something that maybe is underground, but it doesn't have concrete protecting it. Or maybe stored underground, but when it needs to be ready to launch, it'll be brought above ground. Something with limited protection. Some kind of maybe traditional bunker, but nothing designed against nuclear weapons. And hard targets are weapons that are in concrete bunkers designed to withstand nuclear weapons. Um, it actually gives you a hardness rating. So, like, for example, I just hit on hard, and the first thing it pulled up here is this Minuteman 3 ICBM field. Um, and the hardness level is 2,000 PSI, which that means it can withstand up to 2,000 pounds per square inch on that fortification and not break. Um, there's a lot of science that goes into this game. It is an incredibly detailed game. Um, it's more of a simulation than it is a game, to be honest. And it did actually, when it first came out in 1993, it did win um, an award... <laughs> a dubious award from, uh, I forget who it was, calling it one of the worst games of all time. Um, that may be true because it's really not a game. It's a simulation. It's incredibly detailed. So I'm going to start off, and there's submarine bases here as well. These are important because you want to destroy enemy subs before they can get to sea. Because once subs are at, are at sea, you can destroy them to a certain extent. But um, they're a lot harder and easy, you know, to, to detect, and they carry a lot of firepower. So uh, one of my subs carries over 20 missiles, which I can put up to four warheads on any one missile. Um, and that's just something that is, uh, you know, you need to hit these early because once the subs are gone, they're gone. Um, then there's the hard targets, which are the ICBM fields. If I hit one of these, I can knock out 150 enemy ICBMs like that. does a lot of damage to them. There's also the uh, defense establishments, so like radar stations, interceptor units that can intercept your, your bomber attacks. Um, 
headquarter units, um, the uh, anti-submarine warfare, uh, the headquarters for like the fleet and the anti-submarine warfare units are actually really important in this game because those are the only units that can destroy your subs once they're at sea and that's a very substantial part of your um, nuclear deterrence or nuclear force and the goal of this game is really to keep your nuclear force is intact while destroying as much of the enemy, enemy's ability to react to you as possible. Now the thing is, the thing is, um, the more of the enemy forces you destroy, the more of their capabilities you degrade, the more warheads they're going to launch back at you. This warhead's politically authorized up top of the screen here where it says I have 30 weapons. Once I choose 30 different warheads to be launched, I will have to wait until my forces have withstood enough damage to authorize more weapons. It's supposed to simulate a limited nuclear war, so one where there is a limited strike, a limited response, but both sides keep responding to the other's response. So as more weapons are launched and hit targets and things like that, the United States decides to launch more in retribution, and then the Soviet Union launches more, and then the United States launches more. Kind of a spiraling conflict, um, which actually is pretty... Uh, historically accurate to the way that a lot of people thought a, con a conflict might um, erupt. There's also support units which are like bunkers and launch control centers and things like that that support the other targets. There are even, um, you can search through chemical biological facilities or nuclear facilities. Um, there are hundreds, literally hundreds of them. You can even target cities. Um, so you hit the end key, you can target um, more civilian targets, gives you populations. That'll all change once you know a missile hits its target, obviously, because a nuclear weapon does a lot of damage. Um, honestly, this is probably the greatest simulation or nuclear simulation, perhaps most accurate ever. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick strike here. Um, I always like focusing on ICBM fields because, frankly, they have the most damage. Now I'm going to use my SS-18 Mod 3 Satins. The reason I'm using these is because they have a 26 megaton warhead, as you'll see on the bottom here, that is by far the largest. Most U.S. weapons in this game have maybe 1 megaton, somewhere between 100 kilotons to 1 megaton. Um, basically, it's a measurement of power. The more megatons, the more powerful it is. Although the lesser yield American weapons tended to be more accurate. So you see at the bottom it says the yield is 26 megatons, which is huge. They were actually designed to take out American ICBM fields, which is what I'm going to use them for. The CEP is 350 meters. That's something to keep in mind. You don't really need to know because it says hard target kill efficiency, two lines above, 96%. But the CEP basically reflects that the yield and the CEP are going to determine how effective something is against a hard target. If you drop a nuclear weapon right over the top of a ICBM field's command center or that ICBM's launch center, you're going to destroy it. The thing is, you're launching a missile from one corner of the country to the other, and it's going through space, and the question is, how close can you get it to that target? Um, and they, these types of things were, are measured in what's called CEP, or Circular Error Probability. What that means is if you take the center of your target, and you draw a line out, in this case, 350 meters from that target, and then draw a circle, so basically what it's saying is that that weapon will hit anywhere within 350 meters within a circle of the target so it'll hit somewhere within a circle of 350 meters of the center of your target um, some weapons are more accurate than others the SS-18 is a 350 this SS-25 is 260 um, 190 for the SS-24 now generally the lower the CEP the higher um, hard target efficiency kill ratio that you're going to get um, because the closer you are to your target obviously the more likely you are to destroy it um, although uh, yield is important as well um, 
So that's something to keep in mind. The SS18, 26 megatons is so huge that despite the 350 CEP, it's got a 96% hard target kill efficiency. Now that kill efficiency means when it falls inside that 350. The system's reliability is only 85%, so it will not get to its target 15% of the time. I have no idea where they got the numbers for these weapons. Um, the weapon systems are pretty evenly matched. It could be somewhat gamey. Um, there's really no way to know for sure how many missiles launched in a massive strike would really hit their target. But anyway, for the sake of the game, that's what it is. So um, I want to use the SS-18 on this target. I'm targeting the Grand Fork Forks Minuteman 3 ICBM field. Um, I can decide how many warheads to deliver. You can do one, two, three, or four. The less weapons you use, the more efficient you are, the more targets you can hit and destroy, but the lower the probability of your destruction. So if I launch one missile with four multiple entry warheads, you know, even if one or two of them fails, the odds are pretty good it's going to destroy the target. Gives you projected casualties there. The probability if you do just a single shot, the probability if you do more than one shot, um, the correlation of forces, so four of these weapons means I'm using a 30 to 1 ratio. So for four weapons, or for every one weapon I'm using, I'm going to destroy 30 enemy warheads, which is good. You generally want to keep that correlation pretty high. Um, well, that was a glitch. Negative. That's a glitch in there. Negative 3. Look at the casualties right there with two warheads. I'm going to bring people back to life. Uh Apparently we're going to split the gates to hell and bring out, uh, bring people back to life. But I like to use four warheads on these ICBM fields because they never seem to do very well, um, as the percentages would imply. Um, now you'll see my warheads authorized dropped. It gives you a summary of these strikes, so where it's going, the vehicle that's taking, how many weapons there are, or warheads there are, projected casualties, kill probability there, it says 99%. Um, the launch estimate, so how long it'll take my warheads to be launched from their silos, in this case 17 minutes, that goes back to the launch readiness will affect things like that. And then after launch, the estimated time to impact is 45 minutes. So 45 minutes from now, these weapons will hit their target. Total chance of success, 83%. Um, I hit enter, and there now the target status changes to an attack in progress. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for, um, whoops, going the wrong way. I'm going to go ahead and do that, oh wow, I went the long way, for, um, light. I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of the US ICBM fields real quick here. I believe there's eight of them. So Russia has a lot more ICBM targets, and I, as from a from a gaming standpoint, um, it's really a nightmare to try and overcome Russia, in my opinion, because it's just there's so many more targets, there's so many more mobile targets. Even though the American weapons have, in general, a higher um, reliability aspect, and you've got more of the really good weapons, um, it just seems harder to to destroy the enemy. I didn't realize I was not paying attention while I was doing that. I used all 30 warheads. So that's, I guess, all I'm doing right now. Um, and the normal version of the game, you can hit P to view a strategic map, which will show where targets are hit um, and where ICBMs have hit. You can do that on the tactical map as well, but apparently this version in the DOS box, anyway, it's not going to let me do that. Um, so that's one feature that's missing. Now that I've ordered my weapons... Um, launched really all I have to do is wait it's been about four or five minutes now so um, of real time so we're gonna go ahead and accelerate time somewhat um, let's see when I get an alert but yeah we're waiting on the time here um, game started at 356 I believe or 358 I can't remember it's at the beginning of the video um, still nothing. So, this is kind of a surprise. Usually there's some kind of alert. Oh, there we go. Flash message traffic. So let's take a look at what that is saying. Um, I've got a satellite defense. 
um, what does it say? Click S. That little box around the satellite defense up top tells you that's where the new thing is from. So there's an enemy ICBM missile launch from the Minuteman 3 field in Maelstrom. That's what my satellite's telling me. Um, and that was it. So there's an enemy ICBM incoming. It'll take, you know, just like it takes us a while for our missiles to hit targets, so does it take a while for them to hit us. So now I've noticed that if you accelerate time, you tend to start getting alerts at about four minute increments. Um, and this is another satellite alert, another ICBM launch from Maelstrom's Minute Man 3 ICBM field. So it's been about 20 minutes. We've got another 20 to go before I can really do anything. So I'm going to accelerate a bit through some of these n other flash messages, at least to 38. Now I've accelerated quite a bit, so there's going to be some more alerts. There's a early warning system picking up an incoming missile from a satellite. There's the longitude. Um, another launch from Maelstrom, or no, Whitman this time. Um, minute, that's bad. I, I, well, it's a minute, minute Man 3 launch. I'm okay with that. The ones I really don't like to see launch, there's a one from a U.S. submarine, the John Adams. Um, the ones I really don't like to see are the ones that are from Minute, but they are um, Peacemaker weapons, because that's the Americans' hard target weapon. And the one thing I really hate to wor worry about is if the enemy is going to knock out my ICBMs, because those SS-18s to the Russians are so critical. You only get 26 strikes with them, there's only 26 missiles, but you need to use them well, because they're your best by far. They're your best weapon against hard targets. Um, there are other Russian weapons which are effective, but the the SS-18 is by far the, the biggest and, and best at it. Um, there you go. We're looking at kind of a last minute alert. Um, you've got 11 minutes and 18 seconds to impact on this one when it came in. Um, so far nothing's hit because you'll see estimated Commonwealth casualties. That's the Soviets are at zero, so that's still good. Um, but it looks like that's going to be trying for the anti-ballistic missile radar in Pushinko. Um... And that's the only one I've got so far. So when you uh, do that, it changes the notification so that there's no longer anything waiting. Um, now, it's been 39 minutes. If I go back into Strike Generator, still haven't been hit by anything. Don't have the ability to... Um, to view, you know, do any more strikes because we haven't suffered any damage. So we're going to accelerate another 10 minutes or so. Not something you normally want to do when you're playing this game to win, but I'm just doing this kind of to, to show you the game. So I did another 10 minutes. There's more satellite alerts as before. There's a nuclear detection. So there was a nuclear explosion 0.1 mile or 0 0.01 kilometers from Hen House radar in Murmansk. So that's going to be one of my radar systems. Um, defense systems are still 98%, but you got to imagine that radar site is down with a nuclear missile or nuclear weapon destruction or detonation so close to that. Um, the radar picked up more incoming targets from the SA-6 unit, that's a SAM unit near Kursk. Um, in general, just more information there. Um, we're going to go to the strike generator. Now, I've taken, if you see there on the tactical, I've now taken 500,000 casualties. So there's 500,000 um, people who are dead. Um, it's a great thing that this war never actually happened. But it's it's quite a simulator. I find this game fascinating and a lot of fun. There's a, clearly a lot of research behind it, and we're only skimming the surface in this. Um, but it is something that I really do enjoy. Um, not okay. So I accelerated a bit further than I thought. I'm not quite sure how I got Armageddon getting so soon um okay i don't know if this is a glitch because i'm running this in DOSBox and it's really not designed for a windows 7 computer it works on xp pretty well but uh what this is saying is it's armageddon so 
usually when you get hit and you lose some forces and whatnot, you slowly get more weapons you can use until if, you know, things become really bleak and bad for you, you'll have what's called Armageddon, where you can basically launch whatever you want at the enemy. The goal is to avoid Armageddon. You want to try and win um, a tactical victory. I've never done that. I've played this game quite a bit throughout the last, you know, however many years. I've never succeeded in winning and I don't know if that's the point of the game to show how fruitless a nuclear war really would be how many people would die for really no purpose or not but um it usually doesn't show this quite so early but I mean there's a couple of other glitches I've noticed as well since I can't get into the maps or anything like that um but anyway so now you know I'd be able to go through and and launch it whatever I want to launch if we look here we'll see that my missiles for my missiles that I launched at the Americans, the Grand Forks Minuteman base of over 150 missiles was destroyed. Whitman is clear and apparently unaffected. Ellisworth with the uh, Minuteman 2 C's destroyed. It's a firestorm is the weather there you see. Um, the target is destroyed. Um, Maelstrom is apparently okay. Um, Warren is okay, which is bad. Warren is actually where the peacekeepers are. I'm sorry. Um, so, I mean, you saw I had like 80% chance on all of those, and I only destroyed a couple of them, so didn't do that well there. Um, you, you can have different tactics or strategies for, for fighting the war, um, but as far as, I mean, as far as anything is concerned, it's, it's a really, it's a really good game. See defensive status systems down to 89%. Um, it's a really, really good simulation. It's a really good game. Having some problems on this particular computer with it. Um, so I'm not going to really go into anything else here. But just something I wanted to go over. Because, I mean, this is one of those classics that um, kind of a lot of people missed. And if you do have a, a good version of DOSBox that you run and you'd like to check some older games out that are based on historical uh, settings, um, or if you have a computer with XP, this, this game can run really well on it definitely something I'd advise checking out um, and it's it's really one of those uh, really fascinating games it was made toward you know the Cold War had just ended there are some very good games that are made about this you know obviously very uh, concerning and depressing topic um, but definitely something worth looking into if, if you're interested in the topic this is probably the most well-researched simulation or game out there um, and I, I definitely advise looking into it because it can eat up a lot of time it's uh, you kind of plan and master plan and try and figure out all different ways you can have success um, and at least in the time I've poured into it I never have but I mean really the only way to win a nuclear war is not to play it so that could be the overlying, you know, message of this game. I'm not really sure. Um, but, yeah, that's all. I just wanted to go over this uh, interesting game, and I'll have more videos hopefully shortly. It's been a while, and I look to uh, get some more uploads. But, you know, if this is something you liked, it's pretty ad-libbed here. Like I said, I ran into a few technical problems, but I still wanted to put it up. So uh, if you like this or like this kind of... Uh, I guess type of game maybe looking at some older games as well uh, like the video subscribe um, and uh, have a nice nice night